A couple of months ago, I attempted getting to max level before leaving the first town in Fallout 4, and while it did get a ton of attention, a lot of people were disappointed because it used exploits and glitches. But there were a lot of people asking for me to do it again, this time properly. So today, we'll be finding out if you can actually get every perk before leaving Sanctuary without exploits or glitches. The rules are simple, no exploits or glitches, and that's pretty much it. So without further ado, let's dive into it. First things first, we begin as Norin set our stats to 10 intelligence for experience gains, 10 in charisma for the most amount of settlers right out of the gate, and 4 in luck which I'll boost to 5 with the year special book. Hey guys, this is Editing Chris here, and I just couldn't let this one slide. How can one person be so confident yet so wrong? At least one of the three stats was correct. Yes, 10 in intelligence, but we went 10 in luck because I thought that that would help with finding unique items around Sanctuary, and I went with a 4 in charisma because for settler population you start with a base of 10 and then add your charisma modifier on top of it but that'll be boosted to 5 with the Your Special book in Sanctuary. But before I can get that, first I have to get out of the vault. And you don't actually have to skate around the rad roaches in here, especially since you're probably going to be eating a lot of these guys for the first couple of hours until your farm is set up, if you're playing on survival that is. Make sure to grab as much stuff as you can because this will help you a lot with the early building supplies, mainly the cigarette cartons that can be used to make beds. Don't ask me how, because this is the same logic Minecraft uses. After making it outside, your next step before you do anything else is making a recruitment beacon. The only downside is to make a recruitment beacon, you specifically need crystal. And unfortunately for that, you'll have to get it to spawn inside the underground cellar behind one of the houses. Now, this could take you no time at all, or it could take you 45 minutes like it did for me. But essentially, the run is completely dead until you get those two crystals. So what I would advise is making a bed and setting a save point before going in and looting the box, and then going to check what kind of goodies it has. Basically, every time you go to check this box now, the items are going to be randomized, and realistically, you're just looking for anything that can give you a crystal. In my case, it happened to be a camera. But, with one of the hardest parts of the run done, you can now build a recruitment beacon and begin the waiting game because we can't really do anything else until our first indentured servant shows up, so you might as well start looting everything in Sanctuary. Which I would personally say, take the Fortune Finder perk at this point, because what you could do is you could check all the boxes and all the containers in Sanctuary first, before scrapping them just to see if you can get any caps, because our next major hurdle is going to be getting to level 14, and when we do so, we need at least 200 caps to really get the ball rolling. When settlers do finally start to come into Sanctuary, the first thing you want to do is put them on any type of food source that you have. The game is pretty generous and gives you a couple gourds and some melons to work with, and every time you pick up one of these to harvest it, just immediately place it back down. Each one of these settlers can basically handle about six different foods, so make sure you capitalize on that early, because when we get the ability to sell stuff, all that food is getting flipped for money. While you're here, if you have any extra resources to spare, make sure to make some kind of water purifier as well, just to have some type of water source. Melons do a great job for this as they help with food and water levels, as well as some of the little water pumps. They're cheap and allow you to skip the radiation part of your daily calorie intake. But I don't know if these are supposed to be consumable, but the ones in my world were. They seem to become unusable after a while, that's why I have so many later on. Now, with the early game, I thought defense was going to play a much bigger part than it actually did, so I made a couple of barricades and assigned three people up there at one point, giving me a defense rating of 12, because each one of these settlers can handle three barricades by themselves. But besides one scavenger that they shot and two raiders, for the rest of the entire video, I never saw anybody else ever try to raid my settlements. But unfortunately, at this point, you're in another waiting game. So to pass the time, I made a little side area to boost happiness of the settlers. I read somewhere that the higher the happiness, the more people want to come, but I'm not quite sure how this boosts morale. So instead, I started planting corn. 
so much corn that I would be soon drowning in it, and having to harvest all of that corn every reset really started to do number on my eyes. See, the problem is, is you don't really have any resources that you can throw away just yet, so everything matters. On top of that, you don't really have any way to mass power level either, because you at least need to be level 14 before you can really start doing anything. So how do we get there? Well, I will give you three simple ingredients for success. Razor grain, fertilizer, and jet. Razor grain makes a cow, cow makes fertilizer, and fertilizer makes inhalers for the asthma stricken of the commonwealth. Then you could just take them out and take whatever goods they had. And this is going to be the main source of income until we get shops. But of course, the early stages of this challenge can drive you insane. Because to get razor grain, you have to either buy it, or have a raider or new settler have it in their possession. And two of those options aren't available to us yet. Now, the last time I attempted a challenge similar to this, I did actually have a Brahmin randomly wander into the camp. And from all of the research I did, it seems that if you just have an absolute surplus of food, this can cause that to happen. But this time, that didn't seem like it was going to work. Luckily, it wasn't too long before a settler moved into town and happened to bring with them the perfect ingredient for a pharmaceutical company startup. So now that you are the proud owner of exactly one razor grain, that means you are now on your way to getting your own pet cow. Unfortunately, these are going to take a while to grow. Now, I've seen different people on the forums and whatnot say that if you just teleport back and forth to another town and come back, you should be able to just pick up your crops. However, since we cannot leave, that's out of the question. So what I found instead was you're going to have to keep up a healthy dose of cardio. You're actually still going to be able to get everything and you're going to get to take a walk around your permanent solitude. And you're going to be doing a lot of this, as this is probably the most effective way to get the plants to grow. Because they grow once every 24 hours, but the game still has to refresh, they don't just magically appear. So what you need to do is run all the way to the far edge where the bridge is, run all the way around basically following the water's edge until you loop back in on your crops and voila, now you can pick them. So once you've done your loop, grabbed your razor grain and immediately replanted it, eventually you'll have five yummy foods to build yourself a Brahmin cage. And now comes the next step of waiting. Because to catch a Brahmin, you have to wait 1-7 to seven days for one to get caught in the cage. With that being said, if you wait 24 hours, do the loop to get your crops, and you don't have anything in the cage, you just reset and do it all again. Because what else are you supposed to do with your time? Another useful tip for this if you attempt to do this yourself, is you can have as many cows as you want, and they will not contribute to your settler population. However, for cows to make fertilizer, you have to wait the 24 hours and skipping the entire day doesn't fix that. You actually have to wait a little bit during the day to actually get the fertilizer to show up. But if you've been doing your daily loop around the town, then this shouldn't be an issue. Now, while I was doing research for this to find the most efficient way, it turns out that you can only really have a max of three fertilizer a day appear into your settlement. So, whereas you can have as many cows as you like, there's still a cap to how much you can actually receive. So with the daily setup of fertilizer coming in, our next goal is to acquire 6 jet to build a raider cage. Which is still going to take you a while to acquire, but as far as making up caps to fund the rest of the enterprise, this is the fastest way at the moment. Because later in the run, you'll get to a point where caps are useless. And unfortunately for this part, there's really no way to speed this up. So you're just going to be doing a lot of daily loops of catching a cow, gathering your crops, and storing them away, or eating them if you need to, and making drugs like the great pioneers of old. Once you get one cage made and you get your first raider in, not only are you going to start getting better supplies, you're also going to start getting better weapons. You're also going to get whatever money they had off them. And to refresh the raider cage, you actually only need one jet. So going forward, that means that you can start getting a couple extra pieces of jet and actually invest those into more raider cages if you have excess materials. If not, then one will do. That just means you have to wait a little bit longer. We're playing the long game here. Anything we can take at this point is welcome because trust me, by the end of this run, your computer is going to be struggling with how much shit we have going on. Between disregarding asthmetics and acquiring enough currency, we finally have our 200 caps to fund our next endeavor. 
a clothing store. Because what everyone needs in a post-apocalyptic future isn't food and water, but enough drip to flood the glowing sea. But to get our clothes store, we still have to hit level 14 and have two ranks in local leader. And this is the only time that mass crafting is acceptable if you have the materials. I found shelves to work the best. But upon hitting level 14 and becoming a local leader, now the real game could begin. Because I'm about to turn corn into the only currency used in this settlement. At least for now. <clears throat> Once we assign someone to run our money laundering business, they'll magically get a host of items for us to buy and a ton of caps to buy goods off of us. Why they could just give me the money is beyond me, but this is how we'll fund other shops like weapon vendors and junk traders. I highly recommend investing in a junk trader, a medic, and a weapon dealer once you have the caps. Between these three vendors, you won't have to worry about ammo, healing, or materials to craft things moving into the future. And while you can, make sure to stock up on copper, steel, and as much antifreeze bottles as you can. Now that you've got some income, it's time to begin the actual end game of the run. The creme de la creme, gunner cages. These cost 500 caps as well as a decent amount of steel, which can actually take you a couple of days to acquire at first. The other thing to keep in mind though is that gunners on survival do not mess around, and without a lot of endurance to help, killing them can prove rather difficult. So I highly advise building some turrets to help you out with damage until you get a couple more perks and some better weapons. But while doing this, make sure you at least deal some damage to the gunners to get experience. I thought that if the settlers and tourists ended them, I got the levels, but it turns out you need to at least do a third of their health before this happens. But that's okay. Considering you're still at the level of Weenie Hut Jr., you'll need to gear up if you're ever going to get into the Salty Spittoon. So skipping ahead by seven hours, I had finally figured out how best to get these hooligans to cooperate. I had built a tower of 4x4 gunner cages that fed them into a pit. I would pop some jet and just use the weapon with the highest damage and ammo capacity to hopefully do enough damage to get the experience. With immortal settlers, this was the only way I could guarantee the gunner's demise while I poked at them with a pea shooter. The downside with this operation was due to how little damage I was doing at this point, fighting more than one gunner at a time was suicide, but the experience these guys gave was way too valuable to do anything else. One gunner kill was worth way more than just mass producing items, and a lot cheaper too. After every eviction and shooting gallery, I took what I got and either sold it or gave it to a settler to make the runaways easier to deal with. And this was the basic loop. Repair the cages, set them back up, deal with the loot, sleep, and repeat. But I needed this to happen faster, so I took the cages and set them into a longer line to allow for more gunners. For one, it was easier to repair the cages, and two, it funneled them into one line, which later on made this way easier to deal with. Now with all of this that I've shown you, this footage is only at level 22, and to give you an idea, this is 19 hours into the run, and we're not anywhere close to halfway done. So let's do a bit of a time jump. This is at level 101 and about 38 hours in. Money by this point did not matter as I was taking out nearly 30 gunners at a time and reselling their equipment, but the overall strategy had also changed dramatically. Now we had a double decker gunner prison going for us and the setup was to fast forward 48 hours at a time, sleep for 12, then allow us to use the vendors and have their stock refresh, purchasing pretty much everything but mainly hunting for copper steel and antifreeze bottles for Barry Mentats. For those of you who don't know, Barry Mentats gives a plus 5 to intelligence and highlights living targets. This makes it way easier to deal with the stealth boy using gunners, and we also look for Mentats, buff out medics, and jet if you're desperate to help take them out faster. Then sleep until sometime after 6pm, and this will trigger the night person perk, which gives a boost to intelligence only at night. Then start taking chems to get to the dehydrated state on survival at least, I don't know how you would do the same thing on anything else, but anyway, melt your brain and then start crafting things. I used a chem station to make jet or caltrops until Idiot Savant triggered. At rank 3, if Idiot Savant goes off, all your experience gained through kills gains a times 3 multiplier. So once that happens, you open up your raider cages and start drinking water and food to gain all your intelligence and endurance back. 
All of this done together gives you a huge boost to intelligence, and on top of that you gain a huge influx of experience. Mix this in with Demolitions Expert and Grenades and you have one hell of an influx of levels. Then you loot all the bodies, repair the cages, and get ready for the next round. By far, this is the fastest method I've found to leveling up. Once you get into the higher levels, nothing else comes even close in terms of experience and caps. Jumping forward to level 117, the Gunner Prison expanded again to add a third level, but the method for destruction remained the same. This was now a test of attrition and stubbornness rather than difficulty. Levels started to fly by at this point. This is level 149 and still the Gunners gave great experience, but I did notice the frames were starting to drop off. But at keeping this pace, the challenge would be over before any real issues took place. Or at least that's what I thought at the time. This is at 182 and I swear my computer was crying out for help. The bodies weren't disappearing even if I looted them and when grenades went off it just looked like a wave of flesh. But the experience bar climbed pretty steadily. Hopefully this is as worse as it gets. But it gets worse. It got way worse. The textures in the game started freaking out. My character had taken so many chems by this point that the floor was literally melting before her eyes. Not to mention her psyche must have been super great at this point because of the sea of dead people just right by her bed. But as if Todd Howard was trying to prevent me from finishing this challenge, he removed my head at one point. I was crafting chems and heard a pop. I've never even seen this happen before, but the game still counted me as wearing my helmet. And if this isn't the best analogy for me losing my mind during this challenge, then I don't know what is. But it seems I wasn't the only one having issues with my head. But as if my head disappearing wasn't bad enough, I don't think the game was ever meant to handle all of this at the same time, and it seemed like it was really starting to rip itself apart. At level 224, my fans in my computer kicked on. To give you an idea, I have never heard those fans ever go off while playing this game, and combat had slowed to a crawl. Firing my gun was one bullet per three clicks of the mouse, and when grenades came off, the game slowed even more. Something about parting dead gunners like Moses just seemed appropriate at this point. But I was so close to completing and I wasn't going to let hardware stop me. But after watching a slideshow presentation of my character walking through the gunner prison, I'd rather not have my computer commit Sudoku, so I was going to have to figure something out. So I moved the prison to the main street of Sanctuary, but this had a couple of issues. One is that the times 3 multiplier from Idiot Savant doesn't actually last super long, and because the gunners were so spread out, I was missing out on tons of experience. Two is that this actually took way longer to fix because I had to walk twice as far. This was 60 gunner cages long, and efficiency was lost with this design. But at level 238, I could finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. The challenge was almost done. I reverted back to the three-tier prison system and got back to work. But the frames started dying again. There were so many bodies in Sanctuary that Fallout 4 was struggling to do the most basic of tasks. Just look at this. If you're going to try this, I would highly recommend a more powerful PC. I have 16 gigs of RAM and the 3070 Ti card, but my other computer that I used to work on only had a 1050 Ti. That machine would have combusted during this, but as textures started to melt again, the final push commenced. I threw grenades to thin out the herd and then just started blind firing. Surely I had to eventually hit something, but as the experience ticked up, the last gunner fell and the last two perks were acquired. Level 285 with all perks. It's 286 if you don't take the year special book in the beginning. I stopped recording hour long intervals at the 28 hour mark, but the in game timer finished at just over 61 hours. But since the game reversed the time to the last save when you die, I'm actually going to say that the run probably landed somewhere between 61 to 65 hours long. All I have to say is just don't do this. You could go and beat the entire Witcher 3 main quest line and still have 6 hours of side quests to do. Hell, you could have gone and beat the entirety of Fallout 4 in less time than that. But at least we all know it can be done now. I imagine this is one of those videos that you look at the title and just ask, why would you do this to yourself? And the answer is easy, because 
people wanted to see it. If you liked what you saw, please make sure to like the video and consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a ton. If you have a suggestion for a run you'd like to see, make sure to leave it in the comments below. As always, I've been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I will see you on the next one.